The Gospel According to Lehoser John, Chapter 5, The Healing at the Rink. So, like, sometime later, Jesus went up to Fox Vegas for one of the festivals, right? Now there is a rink in Fox Vegas near the RCMP office. Here, a great number of disabled rink rats used to hang. The blind, bull sucks, and the lame. One who was there had been a bull suck for like five whole seasons, eh? When Jesus saw him hanging there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to be a skookum player, bud? Sir, the bull suck replied. I have no one to help me play defense when the other team has the puck. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me, eh? Then Jesus said to him, Get up, you horse head. Pick up your lumber and skate. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his lumber and stole the puck four times that game. Yeah! The day on which this took place was a Saturday, right? And so the rink's referee said to the man who had been healed, It is Saturday, eh? The rules forbid you to touch the puck when it's over the center red line, you knob. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your lumber and play, eh? He didn't teach me all the rules or anything. I'm out here doing my best, you know. So they asked him, Who is this rink rat that told you to pick it up and play without telling you that icing has been a rule for a long time, eh? The player who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus hung a roger and booked it. Later, Jesus found him at the rink and said to him, See, you are well again. Stoop being a lazy hockey player or something worse might happen to you, eh? Like a Winnipeg handshake from your teammates. The man went away and told the referees that it was Jesus who made him a better player. The glory of the sun. So, because Jesus was doing these things on Saturday, the referees began to try to put him in the penalty box, right? In his defense, Jesus said to them, My pops is always at his practicing hockey to this very day, and I too am practicing. For this reason, they tried all the more to eject him. Not only was he breaking the rules of hockey by playing more than 82 games a season, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. And that's pretty pretentious, eh? You didn't hear Gretzky calling himself God, did you? Jesus gave them this answer. Uh-huh, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son does also. Kind of like monkeys, eh? For the father loves the son and shows him all he does except for why he kept going out for groceries a few times a week when mom wasn't home. Yes, he will show him even greater hockey plays than these so that you will be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son passes the puck to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the father judges no one but has entrusted all judgment to the referees that all may honor the game as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the game does not honor the Father who sent him. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal beer and will not be assigned a penalty but has crossed over from the penalty box to the ice. Very truly I tell you, overtime is coming and has now come when the rink rats will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who will hear will play, some in the minor leagues, but some in the NHL, eh? For teams like the Oilers and the Maple Leafs. Yeah, that would be mint, eh? For as the father has skills in himself, so he has granted the son also to have skills on the ice. And he has given him authority to play because he is Canadian. Oh geez, do not be amazed at this. For a time out is coming when all who are in their penalty boxes will hear his whistle and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to play and those who have done what is evil will rise to be ejected, eh? By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, right? And my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but only sponsors like Timmy's and ESPN, eh? Testimonies about Jesus. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true because I polished off four Mickeys and I don't know what I'm saying, right? There is another who testifies in my favor and I know that his testimony about me is true, eh? You have sent to that hose head John, and he has testified to the truth, eh? Not that I accept human testimony, or even the dog's testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. Oh jeez, I don't know what the heck I'm going on about. I have testimony weightier than that of John, right? For the works that the Father has given me to finish, 
The very works I am doing testify that the Father has sent me. Plus, I think I have it written down here somewhere, too. Uh, yeah. And the Father who has sent me, he himself has testified concerning me. So take off, eh? You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you. For you do not believe the one he has sent. You study the rule books diligently, because you think that in them you will have eternal beer, right? These are the very rule books that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to enjoy a twofer. Well, give her, bud. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you, right? I know that you do not have the love of Canada in your hearts. I have come in my father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. So take off, you knob, before I give you a Winnipeg handshake and walk around in your toque. But do not think I will accuse you before my dad, eh? Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set for a skookum season, right? If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say, eh? The referees looked amongst each other and said, Boy, this guy's hosed, eh?